Hi, it's Professor Adam. Let's talk about the chemical equilibrium constant and reaction quotient. Equilibrium relates to the extent of a reaction, the concentrations of the product and reactants when no more change is happening. This is similar to traffic going back and forth over a bridge. The movement in one direction is balanced by the other. When we talk about equilibrium in chemistry, we are usually talking about balance. Not all reactions are unidirectional or forward reactions. Some are reversible, which means that the products of the forward reaction can make the reagents again. This is called a reversible reaction. When the rate of the forward and reverse reactions are equal, then the system is said to be in dynamic equilibrium, but it is important to realize that chemical reactions are still happening. In stoichiometry, limiting reagents indicated how much of a product would be formed but these were for unidirectional or forward reactions where it was assumed that all the reactants make products at which point the reaction is finished. With equilibria the situation is a little more complicated and some maths is necessary to find the concentrations at equilibrium. In the decomposition of nitrogen tetraoxide, as the system approaches the equilibrium, the number of nitrogen dioxide molecules increases and the red-brown colour intensifies. If, for example, initially there is one mole of nitrogen tetraoxide in the closed system, and then when the system reaches equilibrium, there were 1.8 moles of nitrogen dioxide in the system, how much of the nitrogen tetraoxide remains at equilibrium? To solve this problem, we can use something called an icebox. The letters stand for initial, concentrations, changing concentrations, and equilibrium concentrations. The ice box is prepared like this. Then for initial concentrations put 1 mole under nitrogen tetraoxide and 0 moles under nitrogen dioxide as there is no nitrogen dioxide at the start. The total change in concentration is unknown at this point and so it is represented as x, negative x for the reactant because it is being used up to reach equilibrium. Because the stoichiometric coefficient of the product is 2, plus 2x is written. Had the coefficient been 1, then only 1x would have been written. The reaction stoichiometry is always followed. Finally, the sum of the initial and the change is calculated to give the equilibrium amounts. For the reactant, this is 1 minus x, and for the product, the equilibrium concentration is 2x. As the final concentration of nitrogen dioxide was measured as 1.8 moles, which is equal to 2x, by doing some simple algebra, the value for the reactant can be found as 0.1 moles. Every equilibrium will have an equilibrium constant Kc, which will be the ratio of the products to the reactants at equilibrium. It is the ratio of the concentration of the products raised to the power of their stoichiometric coefficients over the concentration of the reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients. This is called the equilibrium constant expression, and if this ratio equals Kc, then the system is at equilibrium, otherwise it is not. If Kc is much greater than 1, then this means the numerator is bigger and the products are favoured. Conversely, if Kc is much less than 1, then the denominator is larger and the reactants are favoured. Solid and pure liquid reactants are not included in the reaction equilibrium expression equation and it is written only in the terms of gaseous or dissolved components. So in the reaction here, the value of K is only in terms of carbon dioxide, while calcium carbonate and calcium oxide are left out. This is because it doesn't make sense to discuss a pure solid or liquid in terms of concentration. The equilibrium of nitrogen and hydrogen in the formation of ammonia can be written in terms of the concentration, as shown previously, but when a reaction includes only gaseous reactants and products, the reaction constant can be written in terms of their partial pressures, following the same products over reactants, with each component to the power of the stoichiometric coefficient. Kc and Kp can be related by the ideal gas law and are thus interchangeable for gaseous systems. How do different K values appear in closed systems at equilibrium? The first has a low K value as the concentration lies heavily to the reactant side. In the centre we have a K value of 1 as the concentrations of the reactants and products are equal. On the right hand side 
we have a high k value as the equilibrium lies to the right and the formation of the products is favored. Whilst the equilibrium constant is good for expressing the concentration at equilibrium, there is a need to relate concentrations at any stage of the reaction. For this, the reaction quotient is used. The concentration values are inserted into the equation to calculate the reaction quotient, Q. If Kc is smaller than Q, then Q is more on the product side, and the reactants will be formed in order to reach equilibrium. If Kc is bigger than Q, then the equilibrium is on the reactant side, and more products will be formed to equilibrate. When Kc is equal to Q, the system is at equilibrium. Determination of Q is useful because it can tell if the system is at equilibrium because at this point Q will equal K. If Q is greater than K, then some of the products must be converted to reactants to reach equilibrium. And if Q is less than K, then some of the reactants must be used to form products in order to reach equilibrium. Let's work on a more challenging icebox and calculate the equilibrium concentrations of each substance in the following reaction in terms of molarity, which is moles per litre. The initial concentrations of the reactants are 0.15 moles per litre and Kc is equal to 64. The first thing is to set up the icebox. The initial concentration of the reactants is 0.15 moles per litre and the concentration of the product will initially be zero. The change for each of the substances will be different and stoichiometry must be considered. For every mole of reactant, two moles of product is formed, as the product is formed at twice the rate the reactants are used up, so the change is plus 2x. The equilibrium is then the sum of initial and change which gives the completed icebox. Take these values and plug them into the equilibrium expression and solve for x by taking the square root of both sides because both the numerator and the denominator are squares. If they weren't, a quadratic equation may need to be solved. This then gives the value of x as 0.12, which can be plugged into our original expression to give the equilibrium concentrations of the products and the reactants. What about instances where the solution is not so simple and a quadratic equation is needed such as in the decomposition of PCL5? The initial concentration of PCL5 is 0 0.10 moles per litre and Kc is 1.20 at a given temperature. Using the usual format, the icebox can be assembled. When the values are plugged into the equilibrium constant expression, it is found that simply taking the square of both sides is not possible as a quadratic expression is produced, which can be solved using the quadratic equation, which when solved gives two values for x. Though the negative value is not chemically meaningful, x then becomes 0.09 and the equilibrium concentrations can be found by plugging the value of x into the equations. Sometimes, when the value of Kc is very low, quadratic equations can be avoided, such as in the case of the equilibrium between the iodine molecule and dissociated atoms. Once again, solving the equilibrium expression would result in a quadratic equation. This, of course, can be solved in the usual way, but because the value of Kc is very small, it is possible to approximate 0.3 minus x as 0.3, resulting in a much simpler equation. This can be solved to give x, and then the equilibrium concentration of I2 is effectively unchanged. This method is usually only appropriate if the concentration of the reactant is more than 100 times larger than the Kc value. Let's check comprehension. 